Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting homemade equation. I'm still trying to get my voice back so thank you for your patience and also I'd like to thank you for your beautiful comments. All right, let's get to work. This I think will be interesting. We have i to the e to the z equals 1 and z is a complex number. Let's see how complex things can get. So I'm going to go ahead and write i in polar form and 1 in polar form. To be able to do that, i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2. But you don't have to stop there because you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi n to find general solutions. If you're looking for principal values, then you can stick to i pi over 2. Okay? This is i, and 1 can be written as e to the power i times 2 pi k. n and k are integers, and they don't have to be the same. Okay? Great. Let's put it together. Now we have e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then we're going to raise it to the power e to the z. And then that is going to equal to 1, which is e to the i times 2 pi k. Great. Now let's go ahead and multiply the exponents. Since we have the same basis, we can go ahead and let go of them or just natural log both sides. So this equals this. Quite a few things are going to cancel out, such as we can pull out a pi here. It's going to be 1 half plus 2n. Remember, n and k are integers and there are some limitations. Okay. Now, i cancels out, pi cancels out, so we end up with something like this. Let's make a common denominator, and then multiply by the reciprocal, and we'll get something interesting. All right, now in this case, can n be zero? Yes. Can k be zero? No. Because if k is 0, we get e to the z equals 0, which doesn't even have solutions in the complex world. Does it have any solutions? Negative infinity? No. Nope. Not in any world as far as I know. So k doesn't equal to 0. And if n is 0, then we're going to get e to the z equals 4k, which is fairly simple, right? Now we're going to make some assumptions. And the, the second case we don't cover is actually fairly easy. You can do it. If... 4k over 4n plus 1 is greater than 0, then this number can be written as follows. 4k over 4n plus 1 is just a positive real number multiplied by e to the power 2 pi mi. Remember, this is 1 in the complex world, so we can always multiply by that. And the reason being is we want to get all the solutions, okay? But then we can specify some. What is next? Oh, m is a integer too. Awesome. Let's go ahead and ln both sides. And then when we do, of course, we're going to get a sum. Right? You see, that is 1, but its ln is not always 0. If m equals, m, m equals 0, yes, but not all the time. Right? Three integers, so a lot of parameters, but that should be the general solution. And guess what? This is the interesting part. Again, k does not equal zero. If m and n are zero, then z becomes ln 4k. Yay. So z can be real. Really interesting, right? Now here's the thing. If z is ln 4k, Let's go back to the original. Re 
e, e to the z, if z is ln 4k, e to the z is just going to be 4k, right? By definition, because e to the ln 4k is just 4k. So this is going to be i to the power 4k. As you know, 4k is a multiple of 4 because k is an integer, and this is always 1. So you can see that this satisfies. But here's the million dollar question. Some people argue that there shouldn't be a 4n plus 1. In the denominator, it should just be 1. Let's find out, or at least... Uh, take a look what if n is not zero let's say n is equal to one and k is equal to one then z is going to be ln four over five and again for simplicity's sake let's just take m equals zero because it just eliminates the imaginary part right so that's no big deal well maybe now if z is that i to the e to the z is just going to be i to the power e to the z is just going to be 4 fifths so the question is is i to the power 4 fifths equal to 1 that's a good question right now some people argue that yes it is some people say no because this is ambiguous you know why because if you think about it as i to the fourth to the power 1 fifth i to the 4 is 1 right so this is 1 to the power 1 fifth but in the complex world this means the fifth roots of one and there's five of them if you're talking about any of the roots it's not always one one of them is one but only one of them or if you write it this way would things matter like would it be different you can think about the fifth roots of i and then raise both to the fourth power you'll notice you're gonna get the same thing now when does this become an issue though if you get something like i to the power six over four this is problematic you know why because if you think about it as i to the 6 to the 1 fourth, and then i to the 6 is just going to be i squared, which is negative 1. And in the real world, this is undefined. But in the complex world, it may have different solutions. The problem with that is these two things are not always equal, even though these numbers are. The fraction has to be in the simplest form. Anyways, what are your thoughts on if... This is the general solution, or should we eliminate n from this equation? Please let us know in the comment section down below. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.